Hello Lightwave fans, this is Ryan Roy from Liberty3D.com, your central source for Lightwave training from the masters themselves. I was reading something on the Lightwave forums about an effect that might be considered challenging to do in Lightwave. Let's just say I disagree entirely. This video will be more of a demonstration than a tutorial. I just want to show how ridiculously easy it is to get complicated looking motions and have total control over them in the process. I'll make a disc. Select. Invert. Thicken. Subdivide. Radial clone. It is important that the segments are far enough apart so that the bones pull these pieces independently. Okay, we're done in Modeler. Time to jump into Layout. I'll dump some bones into this top strap of this object, and I'll use Relativity to get a rolling effect. Doctor Follower, as I've said before, is probably one of the most frequently used tools of the bunch. Notice that I enabled Scale. You may want to put a helmet on now because I'm going to blow your mind. I'll copy and paste Relativity onto all of the other bones. Notice how scaling the first bone gives me a layered effect. I use relativity for this kind of stuff all the time, and it's also handy for things like tails and tentacles and countless other things. Bake the motion of the relativity controlled bones and delete the second keyframe on the first bone. One more thing, I'll remove relativity from every single bone by clicking on just one of them, hit clear, copy to descendants, and now I can move all these bones by hand. Clone the object, rotate. Now because I'm so lazy, I'm just going to use LScript Commander to repeat this step five times. Parent in place, move the bones to the main object, delete the clones, rest bones, done. Now most people would adjust this by hand and move the bones individually to get these pieces put together, but I don't play that way. Understanding motion modifiers and assign tools is vital for an efficient workflow. Didn't I tell you that you should be wearing a helmet by now? Okay, let's bend this thing around. Scan an MDD file using cloth effects, save the file, delete the bones, and I'll go ahead and use a nodal displacement to load this MDD file. I'm using the DPKit MDD pointer because Dennis Pontanier is awesome and you should consider donating if you use and abuse his toolset. Node displacement order to before bones, and subdivision order must be set to after bones. Throw some bones on this object, use morphed positions. Now I can bend and stretch and squash this animation however I please. One more thing. You need IK Booster in your workflow. It has uses far beyond what most people believe, and it happens to be very useful here too. When you have a bunch of bones like this, you don't want all of these handles and gizmos in your way. You just want to get stuff done. IK Booster's sole purpose is to help you do just that. All right, that's it for now. We're currently working on weapons effects in Lightwave as part of the Liberty3D.com Synergy series. This will cover lots of cool and fun things, so you can finally make those epic space battles and gunfights that you've always wanted to create. Until next time, see you later.